Are you a teacher that wants to set a solid foundation for an amazing school year from day one, but you're not exactly sure how that's supposed to go? Hi, and welcome back. I'm Cecilia Tomes, and I'm an educator support specialist. I help history teachers feel confident and competent by providing resources, support, and solutions for teaching history. If you've been feeling like you need additional support with curriculum, classroom management, or just really building up your confidence this school year, hit me up at Teach Like an Influencer down below, and let's chat about the ways that we can make this an amazing school year for you and your students. So if you're a subscriber to this channel, which if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. I'm sure that you know by now that I firmly believe that in teaching, first impressions are everything. So in this video, I'll be sharing some tips that you can use to set yourself up for a smooth, successful, and amazing school year. So the first way to create a solid foundation for a successful school year is setting expectations. And I'm not just talking about setting up rules and procedures. I'm also talking about details of how classroom expectations should be carried out. Because oftentimes we establish rules like be respectful or be prepared. And the truth is, if you don't actually make the time to explicitly explain what this actually looks like in your classroom, then students are gonna find all sorts of creative ways to figure it out. And you're gonna be frustrated and feeling like your students are just never meeting your expectations. Now, part of setting expectations is also modeling. Regardless of your student age group, most students are actually visual learners. And you know, science shows us that we're more likely to retain information if we see this information presented in a variety of ways. Plus, allowing them to model for the classroom allows them the opportunity to create ownership over their actions and the classroom expectations. And why? Because they're actually teaching and modeling the expected behavior for their fellow peers. Part of modeling is also making sure that we as teachers are modeled. Now, this is gonna be a very unpopular opinion, but I honestly feel that it's hypocritical when we don't allow things like food or phone use in our class and we expect our students to adhere to these expectations, but then we're in class eating and using our phones. Because imagine how our students feel. This isn't about us being the adults and having the privilege. This is about us being an example for our students and really embodying our classroom expectations. We need to ensure that our students know that we as a class are a team. We succeed and we suffer together if we must. But just being the example will actually help us create a solid foundation of rapport with our students. Now, one final thing to consider when setting expectations for our students is redirecting immediately. One mistake that I used to make as a new teacher was essentially shying away from redirecting behaviors because I wanted to be in my students' good graces and it was still kind of early in the school year. But here's the thing, what you don't correct, you tolerate. And if you dismiss behavior that is not aligned to your classroom contract or management system immediately, it will become a problem later on. Now, this isn't about being inflexible or picking battles over everything. This is about being fair and really showing your students that for the good of all classroom procedures and guidelines must be followed. Now, when creating a solid foundation for your school year, building rapport from day one is essential. And what factors affect your rapport, you ask? Well, to start, your enthusiasm and energy. That's right, human psychology shows us that humans have a tendency to mirror behavior in order to conform and be socially accepted within a group. This is why sometimes some of our little rogue rats rascals end up becoming a pod of rogue rascals when originally it had just been one. Which means that if you show up to the first day of school looking tired, unenthusiastic, frustrated, cranky, this mood will transfer to your students. Energetically speaking, you have the power to influence your students' mood by modeling the mood you want from them. And more importantly, being genuine about it too. Because if you don't, students can read you like a book. So Cecilia, how do I show up with energy and enthusiasm if I'm still trying to recover from last year? Simple, evaluate what you do, determine what is urgent, and commit yourself to doing one thing every day that makes you happy. Because 
that small act of self-care is gonna show up in your attitude the next day at school. Now, aside from this, a solid foundation for building rapport with students doesn't just come by chance or by being nice. We need to have systems in place that support us in facilitating rapport building. So what do rapport creating systems look like? Well, they look like creating opportunities for students to be involved in positions of responsibility. So for example, it might be instead of directing the class just to check their bell work or their warm up, give a student the opportunity to play teacher and take on a leadership role. It looks like allowing your students to contribute to classroom expectations. It may look like making the commitment to read over each and every single one of our student interest forms so that you can actually design activities that your students will be interested in. And if you need a ready-made student interest form, I do have a ready-to-print student interest survey down at the link below. It also means designating days that you can show up for your students outside the classroom. Now this one may seem like a no-brainer, but it's often forgotten because it's so obvious. But dependability and routines also help create rapport with our students because it builds a trust factor that our students can count on us on the daily to be fair, present, and reliable. So if you tell your student that you're gonna show up to one of their games, make sure you follow through. If you say you're going to have quizzes every Friday, make sure that you prepare and you follow through. Because when you don't, students start to doubt in your word and they just won't take you seriously. And the students that do prepare for these quizzes or for these events end up feeling resentful towards you because they don't feel like you can keep your word and therefore you don't really take your class seriously. Now creating a great start to your school year also means that you introduce social emotional learning immediately. So what does this look like? Well, first of all, we want to focus on creating a safe space for students. By safe, I'm talking about emotionally safe. Do your students feel like they won't be judged for not knowing an answer? Do they feel safe enough to publicly quote unquote fail? Do they feel like they can be honest and vulnerable with you? Do they feel like you're genuinely looking out for their best interests? Embedding SEL into day one will also make your students feel appreciated and wanted. Plus, it sets the tone for you as a caring, humane, and trustworthy worthy teacher that will always prioritize students over the lesson of the day. And don't forget that modeling vulnerability is one of the quickest ways that you can put your students at ease to open up and create trust. Now, just to be clear, none of these behaviors or strategies happen on their own. An effective teacher that sets a foundation and wants a successful school year heavily prioritizes systemizing all these elements. So that means that you are investing the time in creating procedural systems, investing the time in creating a management system. And just to be clear, procedural and management are not the same. Procedural is how things will operate. Management is how you will orchestrate and facilitate the operation of these procedures. Have a personal system for your workflow because this is going to keep you productive and, you know, on top of things. Part of being able to stick to routines show up consistently for your students and create trust with your students requires you to have a workflow. If you don't, you'll always feel like you're just running this infinite race with no finish line in sight. It'll leave you tired and pretty much unable to show up enthusiastically for your students and for yourself. If you found this video helpful, allow me to recommend Teach Like a Pro. And this video is for teachers that are feeling a little bit overwhelmed and want to know what main pillars to concentrate on so that they can improve their overall effectiveness as a teacher. Don't forget to join our History Teacher Help Hotline newsletter. Get tips, support, and resources straight to your inbox. I want your success and I'm rooting for you always. Until next time, class dismissed.